since we talked about infrastructure week for four years. We didn't get a single thing done. Not one. We have lived in and felt the decisions made decades ago. Today, today, we're making decisions to transform your lives decades to come. And we're doing it all across America. As the unofficial general election kicks off, President Biden took his re-election message on the road this week, making stops in the critical swing states of Wisconsin and Michigan. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Dan Kildee of Michigan. He met with President Biden Thursday in his state. Welcome. Congressman, you were, you were with uh, President Biden. Can you just talk to us a little bit about what you saw from your vantage point on the trip? Because you were with them. He was, was in your district. It was. He was right in my district. He was at a home in Saginaw. Uh, and it was a group of Democratic volunteers across the spectrum. And there's enthusiasm there. But I do think we have to acknowledge, and I talked to the president about this, is that we have a couple of unique challenges in Michigan that we're going to have to address. What are those challenges? Number one, it's making sure that we can repetitively tell the story of the Biden economic policy and what it means for people in Michigan. And when I talk about economic policies, I mean broadly. That includes investment in new manufacturing, but also includes protecting the economic long-term future of American women, of Michigan women, by making sure that they can make their own choices when it comes to reproductive, uh, their reproductive rights. That's not just a social question. That's an economic question. So we have to drive that message home. And then more difficult question, of course, is we have to take head on the challenges that we face in the, Mid in the Middle East. Uh, the Israel-Hamas war with a really large um, Arab and Muslim population in Michigan is creating some difficulty. We have to address it. We have to have the conversation. Those 13 percent of Michigan Democratic voters that voted uncommitted, those are voices that need to be heard. They're not people that are completely lost to us. Maybe in some cases they are. And I understand that because I happen to share their view. I support a ceasefire. I think Israel's prosecution of this war is, is indefensible. And I think we have to address that head on. I was happy to see uh, Senator Schumer's speech. Uh, I hope this can be an inflection point for us. And interestingly enough, to, to, to deal with this issue as a political issue is the worst kind of politics. I know, we right. need to just deal right. with it as a mm -hmm. human rights question. And the politics will take care of itself. So, so on that point, the, the politics is what drives a lot of, of all of this in a political season. So we have NBC News uh, reporters Ali Rafa, Monica Alba, and Jillian Frankel uh, writing on Thursday. For the second time this year, President Joe Biden visited Michigan without any in-person meetings with members of its Arab American or Muslim communities as he faces protests at campaign events and at the ballot box over Israel's military action in Gaza. How do you not have the president sit down and meet with Arab American and Muslim leaders in one of the largest, if not the largest, Arab American and Muslim population in the country in such an important state like Michigan? For me, the politics there says you are tone deaf as I don't know what if you don't understand what you need the president to do in that state at that moment, given what happened just a few weeks before uh, in that Michigan primary. There's no question, uh, and I've encouraged it. Uh, there needs to be a conversation, but not just one conversation. There has to be an ongoing discussion between the president and the people mm -hmm. uh, around him in the Arab and Muslim community, not just in Michigan, but across the country. Their voices matter. And again, they matter not because of the political implications, because they are Americans who have a connection to that part of the world, and they're seeing people in their own families uh, suffer just, you know, unconscionable um, uh, treatment by, mm -hmm. by the prosecution of this war. That is not to say that Israel does not have the right to defend itself. And one of the things we have to do is not get ourselves in a position where we have to choose which lives Between are more the two. precious than the other. All lives are precious. But when we see 30,000 dead in Gaza, when we see the possibility of large-scale mal malnutrition and the Israeli government blocking critical aid to those people, the U.S. can't be neutral on that question. 
And the way we address it is first by making sure we have an open and ongoing conversation with the Arab and Muslim community in this country, the way I do mm -hmm. every but Don't week. you need the president at the table to do that when he's in the backyard? That would be very helpful. And it's not just the president, the people yeah. around the president, but, yeah. but the president for sure. Yeah. I don't well, know. To your At point, least... Congressman, in, in this case, we're talking about policy, and the policy itself is what needs to be addressed. There also, in some of these conversations, a question about the messenger, who is best to go out there and talk about the Biden administration's policies, their accomplishments. I, this caught my ad, this ad from Michigan Laborers, um, the Laborers International Union of North America. Take a listen, and we'll talk about it on the other side. We're up in West Branch, Michigan. We have a lot of hunters out in the woods. Many of these people are flavors who support Joe Biden. People have an opportunity to work and put food on the table, and that's through President Biden's infrastructure dollars. He's bringing manufacturing back to the Midwest. All of a sudden, we're getting chip factories, battery factories, and that's because of the Democrats and President Joe Biden. Road, bridges, everything's getting rebuilt. The out of work list is completely empty, and it's been empty for a good year and a half now. Everything's just booming. I need not tell you, Congressman, this is a theme we return to over and over again, the idea that there have been accomplishments from this administration that simply are not registering among uh, American voters. And part of that is hearing the message over and over again. Part of it, and what I think this ad articulates, is that the messenger also matters. Talk to me about who you see that ad resonating with. Well, that ad resonates with the people I represent, that's for sure. And in fact, the people in that ad are people that I represent. That's my district. Uh, so I think it does make a difference when people who don't often see themselves as being part of the Democratic coalition come to understand that Democratic policies are benefiting their families. We have to make sure that we're at that table, at that kitchen table, when they're talking about their own futures. And those workers, those laborers, are seeing work come to Michigan that never would have appeared were it not for Biden policies. And we can't just say it once. We have to say that repeatedly. We're not going to win every one of those votes. We have to get over the idea that we have to persuade everybody. But if I'm speaking to an audience of 100, and I can talk about the Biden economic policies that are creating manufacturing jobs or good construction jobs, and I turn the heads of four or five of the people sitting in that room, in a state like Michigan, that's the difference between winning and losing. So we have to get over the idea that everyone mm -hmm. needs to be persuaded. It needs to be enough. And we can, if we drive messages like the one that you just showed on the air, that can make a difference in terms of that economic message. It doesn't deal with this other question, but it's an important part of the puzzle. Yeah, I, as, as I look at what is happening, frankly, we often ask the question over and over again, why is it not resonating? Uh, look, we're, November is literally right around the corner. Um, I think people actually start voting in October, though, so you really have until August, September to get things together. Folks can spend the next, you know, six months or so trying to convince voters um, that they just don't, they, they just don't understand about how the policies have affected their lives that the Biden administration uh, and Democrats, frankly, in the House and the Senate have driven, or they can spend the next six months meeting the voters where they are. And, uh, you know, it, it often, that ad to me, is meeting the voters where they are, is being responsive to what folks are saying, with a little convincing on the side, but but I, I just wonder how you see it, because you rent is high. Yeah. People, it is very expensive for people to try to own a home right now. Interest rates are 7%. I know we bought last September. I'm like, even I'm like, what is going on with these numbers, right. you know? So mm -hmm. there are some things, and the administration and Democrats in Congress do have plans for those things, but I, I, there is some of like, you have to meet people where they are on this issue and talk to them in their actual reality, not just beat them over the head with all these great things that they just don't understand. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. We can't tell people to feel good when they don't feel good. We can't tell people that, don't, that they shouldn't have anxiety when they do have anxiety. But we then have to transition that to a conversation about mm -hmm. where were we three and a half years ago mm. and where are we right now? Are we heading in the right direction or the wrong direction? Unemployment has come down. 14 million new jobs. Inflation, which is real, has come down. We, are, we have a president that is moving us in the right direction. Compare that to what we were dealing with, the chaos that we were dealing with four years ago. Just think about how former President Donald Trump dealt with the greatest 
health and economic threat that we've faced in a long, long time, the pandemic. Compare that to the thoughtful approach that this president has taken to investing in new manufacturing, investing in infrastructure that will pay dividends, dividends that many, many of which will appear long after Joe Biden finishes his second term. But it's about the direction we're going in as a country. And we have to we do have to meet people where they are. We can't deny the concerns that they have. Mm. But we have to remind folks of where we were, where we are now, and where we can go. Well, a lot of Republicans are asking that very question. Are you better off three and a half than you were three and a half years ago? So so I think you're on the right track in terms of how that's going to be framed. Because I think the, at the end of the day, the American people are going to go, yeah, I'm better off. Yeah, and Congress. Congress matters here, too. Yeah,